What's going on, guys? Nate here. We have some huge news for Disney Lorcana card game. If you guys don't know, Disney is making a TCG card game that's coming out in 2023. The cards are supposed to be shown off tomorrow. Um, by the time you're watching this, it probably is tomorrow because it's like 11 something. But about three hours ago, in the middle of recording a podcast, me and my co host came across this article, which we talked about pretty heavily in the Pokey Talk podcast. But it actually shows off the first cards at the expo that we can expect to see this weekend. And they are already off on the right foot. This is going to be some exclusive stuff. So let's go ahead and take a look at the article. The first cards for Disney's Lorcana, the ambitious new trading card game from Ravensburger. I did a video on Ravensburger about a week ago when this news first came out and did a deep dive on them. Very good relationship between them and Disney. And as far as actual products goes, they did some board games with them. But uh, yeah, they arrived today at the D23 convention in Anaheim, California. So essentially, Polygon is probably one of the news outlets there that got early access to the booths, and uh, they got to see these things. They include seven characters from across Disney's nearly 100-year history of pop culture dominance, as well as one card of Mickey Mouse himself exclusive to the convention. Now, here are the cards. This just basically says, you know... They know the first set of cards is going to be called Disney Lorcana, the first chapter, and that they will take on the role of Illumineers, bringing to life glimmers of classic Disney characters to do battle on the table, hence the name Lorcana. This is really going to explore the Disney lore. And here we have it, guys, the six cards that are going to be featured in the collector set at the event we have Stitch, Elsa, Corilla DeVille, Maleficent, Dragon, Robin Hood, and Captain Hook. So very cool cards to pick from. They kind of touched on all aspects of the lore. Elsa is going to be a very popular card, as well as I think Maleficent just being staples of Disney at this point, as well as all these characters. But yeah, we get some... Very close look at the cards as well as some of the mechanics that we might see. Let's move on, see what it says here. Disney Lorcana is a bold move for Ravensburger, a 139-year-old board game publisher. They started in 1884, which is pretty crazy. The company is known for their Disney villainous. That's their ties with Disney already. It's a family-friendly strategy board game. And it includes nearly 30 villains across all of Disney, Marvel, and Star Wars multiverses. Because, you know, Marvel is kind of like a multiverse in itself. So, uh, endless possibilities for this card game. They can explore all those things. Even though it's most likely going to start with Disney and their deep lore. It could go any which way possible. So, the CEO of the North America branch, um, Philip spoke about the big picture implications of the partnership with the house of the mouse. Let's check this out here. This game is probably the largest potential that Ravensburger has ever gone after. This was said in that earlier article that I talked about in my last video. Um, he says, and hence also probably the largest investment that we have ever done into any type of product. So they already give you the sense that they're going all out. Let's check out some of the cards themselves and some of the mechanics we might see. First off, we have a symbol with a number up here at the top. Maybe that is their casting cost, like similar to magic. Maybe you need like nine things to cast it. These little symbols here might be the things that you need to cast. This has an attack called Dragonfire. When you play this character... You may banish chosen a part opposing character. So it's almost like an exile from Magic the Gathering. Other than the artwork, though, we have the name and the description of the name. We have this weird symbol, which might be the typing of the card. So this might be fire. This might be dark or normal or human, for all we know. We have a little more of a description, Storyborn, Villain Dragon. Dreamborn Villain Pirate Captain. 
So that opens up the possibilities of additional cards that affects only dragons or only captains or pirates, stuff like that. So very interesting thing um, to have like a subclass of card. We have what looks to be like attack and defense. I don't really like how these are two different colors and the defense looks like bigger, like the shield is bigger than like the star of the attack. I don't know if that's what they're calling it, but it looks like it. You know, you have a bigger number and then a smaller number on the dragon and then the bigger number on Captain Hook because he might be more defense based and what appears to be a shield. His ability or attack is challenger plus two. When challenging, this character gets plus two star. So maybe plus two attack. That's why I think that is the attack is because that what seems to be applied to when you're fighting or challenging another character. And then we, of course, have some flavor text. Very cool stuff. We have some set information here, copyright information. I think this first... A lot of people think this is like first edition, but because the set is called the first chapter, I think this is simply the set symbol because they did say that these special cards are going to be in the set itself. And the D23 Expo is just a marking to show that it's like a promo from the Expo. Moving on to some other cards, I'm not going to be touching on these cards as much because just wanted to break down the card a couple times. But yeah, pretty, pretty cool card. This has like a tap mechanic that they're showing here. Freeze and like tap like magic. Exert chosen part. Uh, yeah, exert chosen opposing character. So when cards are exerted, they might tap like they do in magic. So you can't do anything else with them in the game. And Corella Deville has you'll be sorry when this character is challenged or banished. You may return chosen characters to their player's hand. That's going to be pretty awesome. They have different symbols altogether and different colors. So maybe the typing or the colors mean something in the game. Maybe there's weaknesses or something like that. If we go down here in Robin Hood, he's got the blue and a different symbol and Stitch has orange or yellow and a completely different symbol there as well. There is a shift mechanic. Looks like this is like an ability almost of Pokemon or, yeah, an ability of magic. Shift four, you may pay four star to play this on top of one of your Stitch characters. So this is like a souped up version of Stitch. It makes me think that there's going to be like a, a base card similar to like the old school Kingdom Hearts. You know, there was a Sora that was like a weaker form and a powerful form that you could like eventually get to so there's going to be multiple layers to multiple cards i'm sure there's going to be multiple stitch cards and uh yeah whenever you play a character with cost two or less you may exert it to draw a card so you may like make sure that's done with that card for a turn to draw another card that's going to be really powerful drawing cards and card games are always very very powerful you know um and Robin Hood looks like he's more of an attacker. He just has two attacks, is what I assume is he attacks. When you play this character, if an opponent has more cards in their hand than you, draw a card. Very good. During your turn, this character has evasive. They can challenge characters with evasive. Huh. That's pretty cool. But, uh, yeah. Here's a Mickey Mouse card. This might be the biggest news of them all is this little section right here. I'm going to read this whole thing for you guys real quick here. So the first seven cards feature, you know, so-and-so. We just covered that. A collector's card available only to D23 members who attend this year's convention features Mickey Mouse himself wearing the garb of the brave little tailor. Harkening back to the classic animated short that debuted in 1938. That's pretty old. So this is a callback to an animated short. They're really going back, showing their scope. And uh, yeah, he has evasive also. Only characters with evasive can challenge his character. So it's almost like flying and magic. You know, cards can't target flying cards unless they're also flying or they have reach. So there's some real, real depth to this card game, you know, more so than Pokemon. 
And, you know, I'd even say more so than Yu-Gi-Oh. I mean, this is truly rivaling Magic the Gathering. This is like a lighter version of Magic the Gathering, essentially. I uh, love the flavor text, though. But, yeah, the artist involved in the creation of the key art for these cards are representative, or they they said that they're representative of the heavyweight illustration talent at Ravensburger. And they are calling on support for the line. Am I reading that right? I, I kind of chopped that up. Artists involved in the creation of the key art for these cards are representative of the heavyweight illustration talent Ravensburger is calling on to support the line. So they're really putting forward their top guys. And uh, it shows in this line of work. I mean, this is just the first we're seeing. But it goes on to describe who is actually working on the cards. Simangasio, Simbaya. I hopefully I pronounced that right. I'm totally chopping it up. Sorry. Nicholas Cole. That's an easy one. Louis Hertura. Huerta, maybe. John Lauren and Marcel Berg. So thank you guys so much for sharing these illustrations. Awesome work so far. Very, very much so interested in this card game. Not only as like collecting, like these cards are going to be some of the most collectible cards if this thing really takes off. But I mean, I want to play this. This looks pretty fun. So the developers tell Polygon that the characters and abilities in the special D23 Expo Collector set will also appear in Disney Lorcana, the first chapter, which is the first release or the first set of the card game itself. And that's going to be late next year. The D23 Expo Collector Set cards will feature a unique foil treatment. So all these cards up here are going to be in the first set. You know, pretty much these are like the pre-release versions. But the cards in this set are going to have a special foil treatment. And you have to buy them at the convention for $50. So... That makes me think, you know, who's going to buy these? There isn't much known. They just announced this card game, like, within the last couple weeks. It's going to be hard to tell. Those who buy them, are they actually going to be holding on to them? Are they actually going to be selling them? Who knows? So, yeah, it's really hard to say what these cards are going to be worth. I'm going to be keeping an eye out this weekend. The first ones that sell are going to be ridiculous. Um, they're going to be marked with the D23 Expo and first edition symbols. So this tells you that that is leaning more towards the first edition symbol rather than the first set symbol. Oh man, they have first editions, they have unique arts and yeah, convention exclusives. So only those present at the convention will be able to receive the Mickey Mouse card, which is not included in the collector's set. So, recap. This Mickey Mouse card, it it makes it sound like if you're just there, you can get a copy of this card. However, it is the convention exclusive. It's not going to be in the normal set. These other cards will be at you know in the featured set. So, these cards will be seen again. But they come in a collector's box that you can only buy at the convention itself for $50. So there is major collectability in these cards and the Mickey Mouse. These cards are going to be the godfathers of the hobby unless they make something else like a illustrator promo or something of that caliber. There's rumors going around on Discord that they only have 300 boxes for each day, so 900 total. That is on the Disney Lorcana Discord. I don't know where any of this information is coming from, except for sources who are there at the convention. So very up in the air, guys. But if you're looking at getting into Lorcana, these cards are going to be what you want to get. Very, very cool looking cards. I can't believe this is actually a thing. And this news is actually better than expected. So let me know what y'all think. We'll see you in the next one. Peace.